bottom of the third, a one nothing San Diego lead. AJ Preller, the general manager of the San Diego Padres, joins us. A very busy time for you all the way through. You know the June draft, then the international signings, and then the trade uh, element of your job. Do you enjoy that part of it? That being on the phone, not, you know, what do you think about this deal? Somebody calls you. Are you interested in this? Yeah, it's a. I mean, it's, it's an exciting time overall. I mean, I think sometimes you know you go through go through a lot of different ideas, and then you know uh, you know maybe you get to a certain point in time, and then you know most of the trade ideas you know end up not working out. So sometimes that, that gets a little frustrating. But in general, it's fun. I think the last few months, just you know acquiring players, acquiring talent, uh, it's been, been a good run. I think our group, you know, our, our scouting group on the pro amateur international side and, and the front office have done. A, you know, it's been a lot of fun working with those guys. They've done a great job. The most uh, current uh, deal was the re-trade of Colin Ray coming back and uh, the young pitcher going to the Marlins. That was all part of the Kastner deal. How did that come about today? Yeah, basically after uh, after Colin, you know, was injured on Saturday night and you know pitching pitching for the Marlins, uh, you know they you know they they talked to us about revisiting the deal. We had you know some difference of opinion in terms of uh, a couple things about the deal, and you know ultimately ended up working out where we were able to you know to come to agreement to them to. Uh, you know, to, to take Colin back. And I think, you know, as, as we mentioned, we made the trade. Colin was not somebody that we were looking to, uh, you know, to move or inter- talking to other teams about. He's probably the, you know, the, you know, the toughest person to move in, in the deal. He's a young starting pitcher that we think a lot of. So when we had the opportunity to reacquire him, uh, you know, we, we, you know, we jumped at it and uh, went from there with it. So. It wasn't as if he was damaged goods, but he did injure himself in the first start. So that's the implication. Uh, but, uh, in your case, it, just in terms of goodwill, were you also thinking, the ground ball deep in the hole, and that's not going to be able to be fielded and safe at first base. Is Travis Jankowski to lead off the third inning with an infield hit? He's two for two. Yeah, there's, you know, I think a lot that goes into all these deals, and ultimately you want deals in situations that both teams are happy and both teams feel, feel content with it. And I think, you know, um, you know, like, you know, when you make a deal in, in terms of, you know, you want Andrew Kasher to go to Florida and go to Miami and pitch well and help them get to the playoffs. And, you want both teams to have that, you know, to have a good feeling, and you know, we're able to work that out with the Marlins to get Colin back down you know, today. So, what's the latest with Colin? Any reports on? Yeah, him? he actually, you know, he saw, uh, talked to him today earlier in the day. He had seen uh, seen a couple doctors, didn't have a diagnosis yet, uh, just gotten an MRI. But I think, you know, when we made the deal, it was, you know, I think we'll we'll bring him back here, you know, tonight to San Diego. He'll see our doctors tomorrow. We'll have a little more more update tomorrow on it. You know, it's ironic. AJ's that he threw the ball so well in Toronto. I mean, he was yeah. hitting his spots, and that's a good lineup. Uh, yeah, I was really impressed, and it's just one of those bad timing things. Uh, well, hopefully he's okay, and it's nothing really major. Yeah, stuff wise, I mean, he's you know he's you know it's, it's, you know he's made, he made his starts. He's you know he's has been stuff like you mentioned the last start that we saw in Toronto, 92, 95, the velocity good, you know the stuff was crisp. And that's just the nature of pitching, honestly, these days. You, know, you go out and you know we've seen it with some prospects, we've seen it with some different guys. Hard to predict. I think uh, you know we're always trying to find the answers yeah. to figure that thing out, but. Uh, you know that's why again, like you know, in a lot of these deals, we've we've added pitching, we've added pitching in the draft on the international side, and you know it is a numbers game. You got you need quality, but you definitely need quantity to get you know graduate guys to the big leagues. It would appear that from the general manager's point of view, that of all the positions on the field, ground ball up the middle, this could be two for Milwaukee, six three and another double play. It's a night full of DPs, each side with two so far. Well, let's uh, look at some of the deals made. So far this year, the top prospects now. This is the list through all the trades and those players that uh, were in the farm system uh, at the very start of the year. Uh, as you look at them all, is there any one or two players that uh, excite you? Uh, Feel that they might be closer to the big leagues than others. I mean, I think I think the good news, and you know, there's there are a lot of guys on that list that excite us, and there's a lot of guys that aren't on that list. You know, that we feel good about. I think we're starting to build a system that's deep. Um, you know, and I think we're starting to build a system that has impact players. You know, and, and guys that could potentially impact you at a, you know at a big way in the All Star level at the big league. You know, the, you know, the big league side. So, um, you know, there's. You know, you know, I think when, when you look at Cal Quantrill and Adrian Morihone, you know, they, you know, you have a you know a college starter out of, out, of, out of the draft out of Stanford, and then you have 17-year-old Cuban lefty. But I think the thing that you know those guys having you know, um, you know, basically the thing that those guys have in common is both strike throwers, both guys that have out pitches, both guys that have good changeups, and both guys that are really competitive and a big time makeup and pedigree. So. You know, I think in, you know, I think uh, our, our instructional league and our, our second half of the minor league is going to look a lot different, and that's usually when you start building something is when you when you're able to go to from affiliate to affiliate, 
and then eventually to the big league team and you start to see depth throughout the system and, and guys that look out on the field and you have five or six guys that have a chance to impact you and I think uh, we're starting to get to that point. And there's some when you look back at the, the great teams uh, often they have come up through the system as a team and then they reach the major leagues. It's not a here you take one from here and one from there one from there and you build this camaraderie and a feeling that this is the Padre style all the way from low A to the big leagues. There's something to say for that. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, going, you know, it's a big part of our program is trying to get you know I think you know, we have a lot of guys that are in that you know that A ball group or that rookie ball grouping and to get those guys started you know at this point in their career we can start building that Padre way uh, you know I think it's I think it's really important. I think you see it in a lot of successful shops, not just in baseball, like, you know, throughout different sports. And uh, you know, that's, uh, that's what we're aiming for. Will Myers walks for the second time. Another way I look at things, A.J., with the abundance of prospects in the minor leagues, low A, double A, is that as time goes on, I mean, let's face it, you'd be the first to admit not every one of those guys is going to hit, right? doesn't mean they're not talented. But through the course of time, maybe a year or two, maybe three, those are chips that you can use in a trade another way. No doubt. Correct? I mean, yeah, I think you see it today. You know, you see, like, you know, it's, it's, it's currency. And, you know, as a general manager, to be able to go out and, you know, and acquire, you know, acquire players, you, you need players other teams like. And, 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 you know, you need a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And, you, need, you know, also you need to have the ability to feel like, hey, if you have three shortstops, you know, you can trade one and, and you know, and you're still going to have two left in your system that can help impact you. So, uh, you know, it's, it's the name of the game. It's, it's obviously been, been the focus for us over the last six months or so and, and really in the last year and a half since I've been on the job. And it's been nice to see here in the last couple of months us be able to acquire some players that we feel like are going to uh, be Padres for a long time. Did any of your scouts in their report when it came to Josh Naylor write down the name Prince Fielder? Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> always been, the, you know, the natural comparison, I think, you know, with Josh. But I think, you know, I think our guys, whether it's whether it's Don Welke or Dave Post or, you know, basically any number of guys that have talked to me with Josh, and the biggest thing to say is. That ball just fouled off the bat of Salarte, and Myers was running on the pitch. By the way, he went two for five last night at Lake Elsinore, Naylor. Yeah, no, it's a, he's, a, he's a guy that really from the time he got on the scene, which is, you know, as a 15, 16-year-old on Team Canada, he's always hit. You know, he hits with power. He's a professional hitter, you know, even at a young age. You know, he's holding his own in the Midwest League. We decided to send him to Lake Elsinore because we have another prospect, Brad Zunica, that's getting a lot of time and, and developing there in Fort Wayne. So we wanted both those guys on the field playing. Um, you know, he had a couple hits last night, Josh. But, uh, you know, it's, you know, I think the easy comp is, you know, there's the Prince Fielder comp, and uh, we'll take it. Yeah. So. There goes Myers again and right through the open hole as Salarte punches a single to left field, beats the shift. And the Padres have runners at the corners with two outs. Nice piece of hitting by Solarte. That's an unusual hit and run. Yeah, did you see him get on top of that? That pitch was up, it was away, and he just gets on top of it enough. There's movement on the infield and means movement on the base pass. And a free 90 feet for Will Myers. Can you give us any more insight into Matt Kemp? Were you able to talk at all with Kemp before he left town? Yeah, no, he got, got him in the clubhouse and talked to him, you know, before the deal. And he was, you know, he was thankful for the opportunity. And he was, uh, you know, he, he, he said, you know, hey, I wish, you know, wish it was different in terms of, you know, we had, we, you know, gone to the postseason last year. And that was a group played a little bit better. But, you know, I think he was excited, you know, to go somewhere else and try, you know, try a different, you know, a different situation as well. And I think the deal from our standpoint really came down to creating some flexibility dollar-wise. And I think we got... Got a lot of you know flexibility in that and you know that's you know that deal and ability to you know potentially reallocate that to other players and other you know other things that are going to help us overall as a club and then you know opportunity I think that you know the camp and Upton deals for us was about you know getting getting some financial flexibility but really creating opportunity for you know an Alex Dickerson or Jabari Blash or potentially down the road you know you know Hunter Renfro or Manny Margot guys that have they've done everything they really can do at the at the AAA level or getting to that point. You know, we really need to give those guys a chance here in the big leagues to see what they can do. And I think, you know, like in the case of Dickerson or Jankowski, they've got an opportunity in the last, you know, in the last couple of weeks, last month. Shemp rips it, but foul. You know, and, they, and I think it's a chance for us to find out if they're going to be, you know, regular type big league players or they're going to be, you know, potentially plus players. But it's hard doing that if you're only getting at bats once a week behind, you know, some veteran, really talented outfielders. So, you know, I think that was you know, definitely part of the rationale for making the deals, and I think that you know going to be a big part of the next couple of months is taking a look at the Dickerson or, you know, or Shem for a blast and kind of seeing where they fit in for us going into next year too. Will we see Renfro and uh, Margot in September? Yeah, I think you know right now they're they're part of a team in El Paso that's playing well and they're probably getting to the playoffs, but I think that's high pop up back at home plate. 
And it's going to carry just over the screen into about the third row. And that, you know, those, those are the discussions when our scouts go in or those are the discussions with our minor league coaches and managers are you know exactly when is the right time, you know. And I think, you know, there's never really a direct, you know, I think there's no, no, no exact formula exactly when is the moment to bring those guys up. But I think part of it is making sure you have opportunity for them in the big league level. And, you know, there's going to be certain things on, on their development card and on their development, you know, kind of checkpoints that we want to see. And, I think when it gets to the point where we feel like they've done those things, they've done everything they can at the AAA level, then we'll bring them to San Diego. Of all the players you've acquired, have you seen them personally? Uh, I've seen a lot, but I mean, I think, you know, the biggest thing we have, we have a really good staff, and we have guys that, that you know, that I trust a lot. And, and on goes Shim. You go ahead, yeah. Have a chance for a final goodbye here before you... Uh, you want to stick around? Yeah, yeah we can go, the top go, of the fourth go one more now. Uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> You know, the check's in the mail already just for a half inning. <laughs> <laughs> we'll continue with A.J. Preller right after this.